Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final round at the 2022 Shelly Sharp Memorial presented by Spinners on the Green. One last go at it around the track here on the MPO side. Got Nick Newton along with Keenan Johnson, Kale Leviska, and rounding up the card is Luke Sampson. All these guys coming into this on the chase card as I mentioned and seeing if they can make somewhat of a push. We've seen some great play here in the front nine and now they're heading to the back. We start on hole number 10, the par four, 651 foot dog leg that slightly bends from left to right. However, that's not really the play that we've seen from Kale over the last two rounds. We'll see what he can do here today. He essentially throws it straight up the middle, lets it somewhat finish left or left center, and then can throw a nearly identical shot after that. So not really trying to take off too much on the tee shot and bend it from left to right, but just really play straight out and then another straight shot. Big power forehand by Luke. That is a great looking backhand shot there by Nick Newton. And Keenan certainly has displayed some significant power during the front nine and very effective with the forehand. Kale likes it. And this is exact same spot. Kale can almost leave his mini, I feel like, from rounds one and two to play some right here for round three. It's just a really consistent play for him. Get to that spot, throw another low line drive. Not going to see him rely on a forehand here like you are by Keenan going back to back forehands. Nick lining up a forehand. Now, relatively short pitch shot here for Luke. He hangs it wide, but that still gives him a look. <laughs> that checks up for him. Newton trying to do some work for the birdie. Oh, and he knew it was high out of his hand, needing the drop. And he's going to have to settle for a par here. Keenan's attempt off the front of the cage. And Kale, just textbook execution here if you're going backhand, backhand on hold 10. Nick will tap in for the par. So him and Kale, both at 18, certainly are doing the chasing that they want to be doing here. Luke catches up and also finds a birdie of his own. So that means Keenan's going to be left out of the party. He'll tap in and will officially start heading back toward the start of the tournament. Heading back to Dukes, in fact. We head over full 11, 759 feet. OB left with the sidewalk. You got a couple of mando trees that you must stay to the right of. And then OB right sidewalk as well. But also... Be aware of pedestrians. I think those are some of the power lines and or some of what plays into some interference that sometimes you hear out here on the course. That looks like a perfectly fine spot for Kale. Would have loved to be a little bit more to the right, but that'll still give him a few options. Luke needs that to spike. And it looks like it checks up. I think that stays in bounds for him. He'll still have to worry about the Mando, but he's still in bounds. Okay. 
Also, options from that left side. There you go. You threw a good shot, dude. <laughs> the no-looker. He knew it was good. That is supreme confidence. I like it. Now, Nick could clearly go up the middle gap here. He's trying to take that all out of play, though. Goes high and wide. Not quite enough power, but still puts him in a good position. And now Luke must go to the right of this marked tree here. And for the exact reason you can see here in frame, we've got park goers and walkers, people hanging on on a bench. Those are all types of things that we're trying to keep the players as far away from as possible. Seen a lot of Mandos added in the last few years to try and increase the safety out here. Well, that checks up for Kale. I'm surprised he didn't go up the middle with that one. And that will also check up just about to Circle's Edge. Yeah, and Luke just realizing, hey, walk away with the par. Don't, don't try and be a hero or do anything crazy. Just walk away with the par here. Here's Nick Newton for birdie. Buckets, I think they say. Cans it from long range. Great birdie for Newton. He goes to 19. Yeah, with the jump shot of his own. He goes to 19. They're matching each other stroke for stroke. That puts Kale seven under through 11 holes. Nick, five under through 11. Keenan. Man, you guys making it look easy out here. Solid performance on the green. Look all outside the paint even. Big shout out. Thank you to my Patreon subs and supporters. Coverage like this wouldn't be possible. I know I say it all the time, but truly, if I didn't have the support that I did via Patreon, you would see a lot less coverage that comes to you guys via the YouTubes. Little 377, slightly uphill. Man, I remember when this hole used to be considered tough many years ago, and now these guys are making it look easy. Kale needs a little skip, and does it check up before OB? Green flag. Great drive by LaVisca. Nick's going to hang it just a hair wider. And a little less skip puts him right there. Just on a rope the whole way. Keenan, solid drive. And Luke also getting up there. You find him just about circle's edge. Puts Luke to 16 under, five down for the round. I want to give a little PSA as we're watching Kale step up for his birdie look. Count it. Another birdie for LaVisca. If you're out watching golf in a setting like this, and I know I hear I think I hear someone on their phone, which is probably not related to the tournament, but if you're out watching golf, I don't know, be quiet. Um, it, it feels like this growing trend as I'm covering more and more events that we have 
more and more people spectating, which is awesome. But use your inside voice while you're outside if you're close to the play. And again, I think that's probably some one else maybe uh, just on a cell phone or talking elsewhere that has nothing to do with the tournament. But it does. It's something that's really come up in the last few months that I've been noticing more and more. All right, that's enough of my dad talk, but just simmer down if you're out there. That's all. If you're trying to intently watch, just just take it down. Maybe do a whisper if you got to tell something to your buddy because the players can hear it. We're moving on. Hole number 13, 405 feet. Danger directly behind the basket, as you see. And then, of course, off to the right, there's danger. And then the sidewalk left is OB, along with a Mando way up by the pin. <laughs> hey, bud, I'm coming right out. Nick. Providing a little bit of direction for where he's trying to toss this one. We always talk about this one's a little bit of a bonus birdie if you can pick it up. That one's leaking left side and short. Like you did yesterday. No need to. That is a great looking shot by Keenan. And right side, hair short, but good position. Oh, the low line drive, does it get a couple of skips? A beautiful shot. I believe that's going to put Kale three for three. This might be the only hole outside of hole nine that Kale didn't get a birdie on throughout any of the three rounds. It just requires such a powerful but yet precise shot. And I'm not saying he doesn't have it, but you can't be mad with walking away with a par here. Mm. Well, misfire there by Newton. Still makeable range. Oh, the high leg kick. Beautiful. Luke, six under for the round. He goes to 17. Water, death putt right behind it. Kale says, who needs the jumper? And that is... Really, one of the best positions to be is on that right side if you're a righty thrower. That gives you a look at the basket. Usually kind of takes the water out of play for the most part. Nick has a tester to save the par. A little more stressful than, than he was looking for after that original tee shot. He still has his great round going. Keenan passes his test for the par. Uh-oh, bag putt? All right, all right, it's Kale. He can do that. We're going to head over to the par four. Hole number 14, my disc in a box for all your shipping solutions. You ship one, two, or three discs. It's an adjustable size box. And also, we'll save you because you can go first class as opposed to priority when you have two discs in there. No other box on the market does that. 655 feet, hole number 14, the par four. OB left. A couple of Mandos. And that is... That's a big drive, but he really wanted it to flare at the end. Great distance, needed more flare. I'm sure you guys can comment. <laughs> you can comment the movie that gets referenced when uh, someone's looking for more flare and how much they have. <laughs> Makes me laugh just thinking about the movie. Okay, okay. 
That'll work. That'll work. You're good. That's tracking over to that left side. Wow, and Nick, <laughs> uh -oh, hit it. up against the Mando tree, was worried about that where that one was headed. Clay, calling for the tree hit, it stops him. Here's Kale. I believe this is just a M5 mid for him. A little off his mark. Here's Keenan's forehand. And anytime you're on this left side, mid to left side, it just gives you both angles. We've seen that throughout the weekend. You can go with the left to right fading forehand, or you can go with the backhand. It just gives you more options when you're more left because you have that one tree to beat. And this is a huge drive by Luke. Unfortunately, you see how it's put him out of position, though, as you're playing to that right side basket in frame. The other basket that back there is hole number five. I mentioned in the front nine, I'll say it again, it is absolutely gorgeous out, bright, Sunny, temps in the 70s, almost no wind to speak of. And we've seen a couple long putts by Luke, but that one doesn't convert. Here's LaVisca for a long birdie look. Hale's got it going on. 21 under. He's a few back of the leaders that are just behind them but certainly making a great push. He's nine under for the round. And Luke will be in for his par, as will Nick. And I'd have to go back and do some math. That looks like about four or five. Out of the last six, I think we've seen from Kale. And that man, Adam Hammes, on a quest as he sits on the lead card trying to defend his two-time championship efforts here at the Shelly Sharp. Looking at the par four, hole 15, plays all the way down the corridor and then hangs a left. You got OB just about everywhere on this one. Here's Kale with the tee shot. Going to play the big Annie. How much does it come out? Actually flattens out a little bit. He's in the left center side of the fairway. And Luke gets over on this. All right, I'll let his commentary. He uh, certainly cutting off his angles over on that left-hand side, that's for sure. And Newton goes with the roller. Oh, I'm liking that. Not insane distance, but certainly great positioning. Good, good distance. Not great. Good. But more importantly, it's the positioning. And we see Keenan get hung up on the first couple of trees here. You have to worry about a huge skip or a flare that could possibly come all the way back to the sidewalk, but that stayed in bounds. And again, when you're on this far left side, you're just taking away so many options because of the mandatories that are up ahead. Get through it. Kale's looking for a big skip. One, two, three, 
four. It's at least a four or five skipper. So Nick, who started off, I think he was five under through the first six holes, has cooled down just a little bit here. Still has a great round going. But was working most of his magic on the front. Here he's looking at a par. Jumper doing exactly what he needed. Here's Kale now. Wow, right side corner pocket. You didn't think that one would have necessarily stuck. All things coming up Kale right now. He's 10 under. The hottest round we've seen this weekend, I believe, is 11 under. That was shot during the first round. Also noticing that Jacob Curtis, a.k.a. Cupcake, is on a tear. The lead card was keeping an eye on him the whole time. I, I feel like he was 11 down through 13 holes or something like that, just absolutely shredding the course. So we were all kind of keeping an eye on what he was doing. Thankfully for them, he was way back on the fourth card. So even an incredible round wasn't necessarily making a push to the lead. But here we are with 16, 390 feet, slightly uphill at the end. You got the road off to the right as out of bounds, and then that sidewalk, which easily comes into play on this left side. Kale's going to club up. We've seen him with back-to-back mid-ranges in one and two. And he's down at the bottom of the hill, looking straight up at it. Must be feeling it that he changes up his game plan. A little overcooked by Newton. That just stops and it doesn't. It catches edge. It's rolling toward the OB. And then just barely curls up at the end, so he is still inbounds. Now he have to decide how aggressive he wants to be on the uphill putt. That just needs to settle down and flirts with the OB, but it's safe. This can be really dicey because you get too aggressive here. A lot of bad things could happen. But not aggressive and a very, very smart, disciplined play, I think, that we just saw from Nick Newton there. And a similar philosophy, although maybe out of position for Keenan. Luke's from one knee. He's got the tree to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> Cash it. Nice putt by Luke. Six under for the round. He's at 17. And you see Kale just at circle's edge as well. What a step outside of it. Kale for birdie. Never <laughs> a doubt. And speaking of doubts... Man, if you doubt that you want to pay for shipping, well, spend at least $30 over on resistancedisc.com. Enter in the code DGGUY when you're checking out. DGGUY as the code, and anything $30 or more will get you free shipping. So big shout out to resistancedisc.com. We appreciate the additional support here of the coverage this weekend. We're heading over two holes left to play. 
very, very birdieable. In fact, the most birdied hole on the course, 17, 243 feet. There's still plenty of danger here, but you see so many different options in terms of players going with a low forehand, high forehand, a little bit of a turn flex shot to get it to land flat. Putters, mids, drivers, <laughs> every disc possible is thrown here, depending on what uh, your choice is. And Kale, no surprise, a little floater, nice and flat next to the pin. I'm going to call that a medium height forehand by Luke. That should work. A little bit short. He was he was a little scared. I'm going to be scared of that OB on that deep left side. Oh, the ice cream truck is here. Oh, flop over already. Oh, no. So slow. I think Lauren Hill said it best. Killing me softly with that one. Oh. Good looking forehand. Heenan on the dance floor. Luke waits for the distractions. It pays off. He goes to 18. Heenan also picks up the birdie. Moves to 15 under. A little bit of a slower round for him. And Luke will, of course, get to bring it, or correction, sorry. Nick will get to bring it in one meter from where he was last inbounds. That's a good par save. Nick. Six under for the round. Kale with that birdie moves to 24 under par. 12 under. Incredible round he's got going, and he is trying to hunt down the lead card and keep pressure on them. We head into the final hole, or is it the final hole of regulation? Hole number 18, the par three, 381 feet with. The mandatory is on the right-hand side that you must stay to the left of. Anything short or left may find the water. So, Kale knows exactly where the scores are at, along with the lead card. And he laces one, putting it all the way up there. And LaVisca, well aware, I said, of the scores. He's at 24. Anthony Barella sits at 25 under going into hole number 17. Yeah, Luke. Luke, pin high. High left side of the basket. Very makeable birdie look. And it's been a real pleasure watching Keenan here. This is the first time I have seen him or had him on coverage. Really excited to see his career. He looks like he's only a few years into it at this point. But certainly a bright future. Has some incredible mechanics. And the flex shot by Newton. If that can flex back, it does. And Newton just short of parked. That was an uncommitted run. <laughs> uncommitted run. Kale Laviska. Incredible round here today. Caps it off with a birdie. That's a 13 under. He's 25. He's going to have to just hang out on the sideline waiting for A.B. to close out. A.B. would go on to birdie number 17 just a few moments later. So A.B. is at 26 under with hole 18 to play. If you don't know, want to know where the scores are, well, then I would suggest probably shutting it off right about now. I'm going to show you the final scores in just a moment. You probably already know what goes down, but I'll give you a little spoiler chance there. 
Keenan going to tap out. He's got a three under effort. And this coverage and all of this weekend wouldn't be possible if it weren't for spinners on the green, along with my boy Kyle, who picked up his first ever camera and then went out and filmed four rounds of golf this weekend. He is the one who recorded this chase card bonus footage. Thank you to my host, Jamie, and everyone else that was out there, all the supporters and all the people that I had such a good time with. That is the 2022 Shelly Sharp Memorial Chase Card bonus action. AB, your champ, dethrones his good friend in Adam Hammes. We'll see you guys all in a couple of weeks. I'll bring you more action from Arizona as we're out there for the Maricopa Open. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you at the next one.